Hello and welcome to this episode of Peak Life. We've got a really interesting topic today. I have with me here Joe Rieger from the Elizabeth River Project. You are the Deputy Director for Restoration. Joe, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. We are talking environmental justice. Mm -hmm. This feels like a new buzz term. Can you help us understand what environmental justice really means? So environmental justice is the con uh, a concept that no um, group of people should be be, have extra exposure to contaminants or other um, environmental factors that uh, would negatively influence their their life. So we're, we're kind of connecting spots in this region that have these particular environmental mm -hmm. hazards with certain census tracts. Is yeah, that right? It's, yeah, it's um, census tracts, but also looking at a, a lot of environmental justice issues have arrived at like past history of, of development within uh, our cities, mm -hmm. um, where either uh, communities of color have been pushed into an area where there's um, c contaminants either from historical um, processes or uh, industrial sites that are currently existing, or um, development of those industrial sites around communities of color. Okay, and so a couple years ago, the Elizabeth River Project decided to really take this on as one of your missions because you, you guys have always been so active mm -hmm. um, in the region, in Chesapeake in particular, yep. um, doing projects, cleanups, um, but, but you really are pushing more towards um, making some more sustainable change within the community. Tell, tell me how you guys are getting involved. So uh, a lot of our projects um, have occurred in, in communities that have envi environmental justice issues. Mm. Some good examples are our work down at Money Point um, with um, South Norfolk mm -hmm. and also um, the areas around South Hill. Um, we've also over in Portsmouth and the Craddock community and Truxton community. Um, and, and in Norfolk and Chesterfield Heights, Poplar Hall, Broad Creek area. So uh, historically, we worked in those areas because those were the areas that had the most environmental uh, pollution or impacts going on in our wow. communities. Um, so like the cleanup at Money Point was because there was an old creosote factory that then was causing cancer in fish. So we knew that was going on. So we worked in that area to clean that side up. Um, this new mapping tool that we developed to look at environmental justice factors and how it overlays in our communities, we can be we can use it to make decisions prior, you know, ba prior to just going to a community. We can look at what factors are impacting communities around Hampton Roads, and then be very proactive at making decisions of these are target areas we want to work in in mm -hmm. the future. And it, it sounds like this is so much bigger than, you know, we, um, we, we talk on our, our channel a lot about Elizabeth River homes and uh -huh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth River businesses, yeah. and there's, you know, so many little things we can do as individuals mm -hmm. to make an impact. But this sounds like it's, it's bigger than that. You know, we're talking like factories that have polluted the river for, you know, how, however many years. So what are you going to be able to do? Is it different for every community or is there something in particular? It really is different for every community. So we worked with the Virginia Institute of Marine Science mm -hmm. to develop this mapping tool. And you can find the mapping tool at the website that is listed below. Mm -hmm. And that, that will take you to the website. And you can have different overlays to look at um, either socially vulnerable or uh, environmental vulnerable communities. And um, that is, those are based off of different factors. Like one environmental uh, vulnerability would be how close am I to a Superfund site or multiple Superfund sites. And Superfund sites are highly contaminated sites that are on a list on the Federal Environmental Protection Agency's um, cleanup um, list. So that would be one example. Um, another environmental factor one might look at is you know, particulate matter in the air, which can cause asthma or lung cancer. Um, so those factors are in, that, are in that model or in the mapping tool. And you can overlay it on areas in Chesapeake or areas in Norfolk or areas in Portsmouth, any of the cities that are here in Hampton Roads. And it'll show you areas that um, have environmental justice issues and what some of those factors are contributing to those. So then if you, if you look at it and it's a, 
if it's you know close to a Superfund site, that would allow us to work with the community to try to get those sites cleaned up. Um, if it's particular matter, potentially, is working with the surrounding um, sources that try to reduce those particular matters. So okay. it's, a, it's a planning tool for us, and we hope that it's also a planning tool for city leaders, the planning departments in the cities, and not just used solely for Elizabeth River Project's use. Because it really, it sounds like it all is contributing to quality of life mm -hmm. here in Chesapeake, which yep. of course, you know, all of our leadership is concerned about and cares about. Um, I, I think that people who live away from these areas might be surprised to look at this, at the mapping tool. I, I was exploring it this past week and to see that like there really are super fun sites nearby. There really are severe mm -hmm. environmental issues. Yep. You know, it's, it's easy to kind of think like, well, we've solved it. You know, nobody's really littering anymore. Everything's great. But there really are some yep. some large scale issues that we still have to kind of conquer. Yeah, I mean, in the city of Chesapeake, there are two of the most contaminated sediment sites in Chesapeake Bay region, um, wow. down at Money Point, and then an old creosote factory called Republic Creosote that is um, just uh, north of Money Point, um, and those two sites. Uh, treated lumber into the early 1960s, started in the 1800s or before that. Um, and before there was an environmental rules, a lot of the materials that were left over were dumped in the river, which was the creosote, that's that black tar you can sometimes see on telephone poles mm -hmm. and on railroad trusses. And uh, when it got dumped in the river, it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't break down. So then the fish that are using the river ended up getting high rates of cancer. And so we've been working on cleaning up those hot spot areas mm -hmm. so that those, the high cancer rates are dropped and um, you know, there's not exposures through um, crab. Cra crabs are still harvested from those areas. Mm. Um, so I think it's important to realize that you know, we've been actively working on trying to clean those those sites up and um you know city of chesapeake has been a partner with us uh, every step of the way yeah so you know again i mentioned the elizabeth river homes you know i i know we all know that uh, we can make the effort by you know scooping the poop yep. and those little things but how how can we help with this how can we support your efforts towards environmental justice yeah, so uh, the, the big thing, I, I mean, I encourage city leaders and, and the planning department and other staff uh, in the city of Chesapeake to, to look at this tool to be able, you can, you, it has overlays of flooding um, with sea oh. level rise. <coughs> and so one thing that you would notice in this tool is Chesapeake, especially in the southern branch, there's going to be significant impacts to communities uh, in those low-lying areas. So you can start overlaying um, uh, um, social um, social factors with environmental factors like flooding, mm -hmm. um, proximity to Superfund sites, um, but also opportunities. There's a layer that shows restoration opportunities that uh, Virginia Institute of Marine Science has. So then we can start saying like, here are some problem areas, but here are some opportunities that we can you know work towards either doing a shoreline project or uh, uh, other types of environmental projects. Um, by using this planning tool. Okay, so really it sounds like if everybody kind of gets tuned into the Elizabeth River Project, um, heads to elizabethriver.org, signs up for the newsletters, all that sort of communication, that way they can just stay up to date on everything that y'all are doing and get involved. Does that sound, does that yeah, sound right? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you getting involved, the biggest thing is one, we'd you know, love to have you as a member and mm -hmm. we can, you can sign up at elizabethriver.org, but we also have River Star Homes and mm -hmm. River Star Homes is the program that you mentioned um, that we uh, have working with homeowners to do projects at people's houses to reduce flooding, uh, to increase habitat. It's a free program. We have a cost share with the city of Chesapeake. So um, in a lot of cases, we can match every dollar. So if a project costs $5,000, hypothetically do at your home, we can provide $2,500. And then the homeowner pays wow. only $2,500 so we can get projects done. And that's uh, support through the city of Chesapeake. Um, and then also we have River Star Businesses, which you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if any of your listeners work for a business that would be interested in participating in that program, um, you'll, you can go to our website and or um, 
uh, sign up on online for that mm -hmm. at elizabethriver.org. And then we also have River Star Schools. So um, most of the Chesapeake schools actually, I think, are already involved. But um, if schools are interested in becoming more active in that program, um, they can find out more information on our website with that program also. So every little bit still helps. Oh, yes. We need, we need, we got a long way to go to clean up this river, and we need everyone um, here in Chesapeake to give us a hand. Joe with the Elizabeth River Project, thank you so much for bringing us all this information on environmental justice. Um, I'm excited to continue to look into it. This was great info. Well, thanks for having me. Well, that does it for this episode of Peak Life. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.